Finding and extracting gold in nature is not overly difficult. The turbulent flow created by almost any sluice box is enough to catch gold even if incorrectly set up. Sure, you may have some losses if it's incorrectly set up, but you're still going to retain a large percentage of concentrates. But extracting gold out of those concentrates is a complete other story. You see, catching heavy things in a creek is easy because you're just taking all of the heavies. Taking just the gold out of everything that's heavy is very difficult. And that is especially true if you're dealing with heavies like I deal with that are non-magnetic. This is cassiterite. Cassiterite is used in the manufacturing of tin. It's non-magnetic and it's extremely dense. That means it creates a lot of friction when it comes to separating it away from the gold, meaning that it likes to trap the gold or prevent prevent the gold from sinking to the bottom of any kind of recovery system. And unfortunately, that means you've got to use more violent water in things such as miller tables or cleanup sluices. And when it comes to things like miller tables, you want what's called laminar flow. Laminar flow is smooth water that doesn't mix together, unlike turbulent flow that you would get in a sluice box. This is why I found miller tables in particular to be so advantageous when it comes to recovering gold out of your concentrates. This amount of tin ore would take me probably two, maybe three hours to hand pan down. But using that, I can cut that time down to about 30 minutes. The miller table has really been designed for gold that is flat, so it can sit on that bed in the laminar flow, not be picked up by the current and taken down the end of the run. Which is perfect for my area, but the second you do something like an ore crush, or you have gold that might be round after coming out of a crusher, or there are some areas that produce little round pieces of gold that are very small, there's nothing to prevent that gold from rolling off the end of your miller table because it is a completely smooth bed to encourage that laminar flow. And it wasn't until I did a little experiment with my piece of 60 grit sandpaper here that I discovered I've been losing a lot of ultrafine gold. Basically all I did was run my 60 grit sandpaper over the entire a bed and created a whole bunch of scratches. Now that may seem really obvious to a lot of people out there because that's exactly the same thing we do with the gold pans, but I've never seen that talked about on any YouTube channel, Facebook page, mining forum, or book when it comes to the miller table. Everyone encourages that laminar flow and to use pitch to control how easily you remove your tin. But the pitch of your miller table doesn't change the fact that little pieces of round gold can roll off the end or little pieces of gold with shape can catch the water like a sailboat and get pulled off the end. These concentrates are from my last two videos where in total I recovered 1.9 grams. All of that concentrate ran over that miller table to collect. But that was before I added the scratches, and I'm willing to bet now that it's all scratched up, I'm going to recover a lot more from the same cons. So I'm going to rerun it and see just how much gold this miller table's been losing. The key to getting any miller table to work efficiently is making sure all the particles are the same size. This is why we use a series of classifiers to size down our material, so that itty bitty gold doesn't have to compete against large pieces of black sand. All the things I do for science. For a number of reasons, I'm actually not going to be running the plus 50 mesh stuff. I want to primarily run the under 50 mesh. The under 50 mesh gold is the hardest stuff to catch. And what I want to see is if the little change I made to my miller table is going to be having an effect where I've lost most of my gold. I understand that I may have lost a few flakes of bigger gold that have shape and I can recover them on the same table. But the bigger the gold, the easier it is to catch. So if I can catch this tiny stuff, I'll be able to catch the bigger stuff. That is all the 50 mesh dirt and potential gold that we've got from our tailings. We know there is gold in that dirt. How much? I hope it's not a lot. First teaspoon. Oh my God. That is not good. That is not good. I mean, it's great that the sandpaper's working. Look, straight away, ultra fine gold and heaps of it. We were losing a lot. Look at that. That is one teaspoon of tailings off the miller table. One teaspoon. I have buckets of that stuff that has run over this table. Now remember, I have adjusted the pitch to move the cassiterite off and keep the majority of the gold at the top. I have fiddled with these settings again and again and again to get the 
maximum return I can with the material I'm running. And that's how much gold I was losing. So I know that these little pieces here look like the pieces you want to be recovering, and that's absolutely right. But what blows me away are these little round bits. That's what I was talking about before. Those little round bits there are the ones you don't even see escape out of your miller table and run off it. That little bit there, you would never see them in amongst your concentrates. And I'm gonna show you what I mean by they roll. So we push it all up, see them roll forward, and then they stop right on the scratches created by the sandpaper. That rolling is why you lose them. If I didn't have scratches there, they would just roll off the end. But they stop in the same spot every time. From that one teaspoon, if you have a miller table, 60 grit sandpaper the whole thing. Except for the top inch. From this point up, I've got no scratches. I've left the bed smooth so I can dump my concentrates along it and all the black sand shifts forward. The scratches are only there to stop the gold that's gonna roll. All gold prospecting equipment loses gold. It's up to you to modify it to make sure it works for your ground. This is four teaspoons of concentrate. I'm not surprised about the type of gold. It's all really round. It's got that shape I was talking about that doesn't like sitting in laminar flow without obstruction. But I'm surprised about the quantity of it. I don't remember even seeing this much come out in the concentrates when I originally mined this gold. The willingness to experiment with your equipment and the openness to admit that you may have made mistakes is what ultimately makes you a better gold prospector. And sometimes the most simple modifications to a piece of equipment can have a massive overall impact on your total gold take. I mean, there is no wonder I lost it. Just look at how much it wants to roll. That's all gold, and it just wants to roll straight off the end. There is a point of diminishing returns when it comes to making a modification like this. I could make the scratches deeper, but then I'm gonna be creating turbulent flow, which is gonna to wanna to keep more of the concentrates. I think if I scratched it any harder, I'd end up in a situation where I was left with too much dirt, and I'd lose the efficiency of the machine. This tiny scrap of sandpaper helped me recover all of that gold. That might not look like a whole bunch. There's probably a 0.1, a 0.15 there. Eight to $10 worth of gold. But $10 times that by two per cleanup five times a week and you're gonna end up with $50 a week. That's two and a half thousand dollars a year or an extra ounce of gold recovered for one very basic modification to your miller table.